friends welcome to my workplace at ranakhat west bengal india this is a totally unedited video this is an intermission cataract and i am going to demonstrate each and every step in real time this is the main incision with a 2.8 mm steel keratom a side port is made on the left side of the main incision I am using a cotton tipped Janssen bard to support the eyeball. I am not using any forceps. This is, a, this is an air bubble filling up the anterior chamber. Beneath this air bubble, tripan blue dye is used to stain the anterior capsule. The dye must touch all parts of the anterior capsule. This is adrenaline and now the dye is washed out. I wash it out routinely because the anterior chamber is uniform, there is, there is no higher concentration of dye at all place, lower concentration of dye at all place, which happens if we don't wash the dye. I am using a uterator forceps to make to puncture the anterior capsule at the center and do a small rexus. Watch that and nothing came out. The intralenticular pressure appears to be normal but not. There is convexity of the anterior surface of the lens and we have to make it flat. So I am aspirating some cortex squeezing out some cortex and making it flat. If we make the anterior surface flat, if it is not convex, chance of rexis run out reduces drastically. Now I take this vana scissor mechanique at the margin of the mineral axis. The anterior chamber has been filled up with visco using the uterator again to enlarge the axis and doing a optimum size axis. Size of this enlarged axis is about 5.25 or 5.5 millimeter. The antechamber is filled up with visco again and now is the time to introduce the feco needle. Here it goes. This is Oatly easy tip. The machine being used is Faro's from Oatly. The feco needle aspirates some superficial cortical lens matter the nucleus is rotated and now the handpiece is turned to make the bevel up and now watch my submarine job technique the tip of the needle is buried in the substance of the nucleus it goes through the substance of the nucleus towards the opposite equator as submarine goes underwater and now you use the chopper to make a crack and now you rotate the nucleus on 180 degree come to the other side sculpt once or twice go to a deeper plane hold the heminucleus and with the chopper sensky hook like Mahanta's chopper you separate the two heminuclei completely and then on heminucleus has been subdivided into two fragments and this is the other heminucleus. So we have got four fragments in less than one minute. Now think if we do divide and conquer technique how much time, how much energy we will spend. 
So, longer the use of time, longer the use of energy, more damage to corneal endothelium. And in submarine chop technique, all the energy is delivered inside the nucleus. The no uh, ultrasonic energy, no heat energy comes to the corneal endothelium and the cornea is crystal clear next day. And now one by one the pieces are being emulsified, ultrasonic energy used in this case is 80 percent, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury from start. And now this is the last piece of the nucleus at this time, vacuum is 400 and flow rate is 40. So, most of the cortex also has come out in this case, but still some cortical lens matter is remaining here and there. The pupil is mid dilated and there can be some cortical lens matter here and there. In this case, I am using a 23G Simco cannula and trying to find out some cortical lens matter. Yes, I have got some lens matter here and there. You have some lens matter was there at 1 o'clock, some was there at 5 o'clock. All the cortical lens matter is removed. We can use coaxial IA, but I find that Simco is a very benign, very safe instrument. Control is in our hands and it's good. But there is no harm in using coaxial IA or bimanual IA. Whatever you are comfortable with, you can use that. The surgeon has that liberty. I am enlarging the main wound because I am going to use a beaker trees. If we do not enlarge, sometimes the lens gets stuck at the wound. So, here goes the lens. This is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece aspheric monofocal intraocular lens. And the lens goes in the capsular bag, the haptic stick shelter at the equator of the capsular bag. I am dialing the lens so that the haptics are about 90 degree away from the main wound so that I can go behind the lens and clean visco from behind the lens easily. When we use visco for implantation of intraocular lens, it is very much necessary to remove all the visco so that the cornea is clear, intraocular pressure is normal next day. I use the Simco for some time and in this case I find some cortex at around 5 o'clock, I remove that also. I go behind the lens, irrigate and aspirate for some time and thus most of the visco, say about 70 percent visco is removed by the Simco. And now I use the bimanual irrigation aspiration. The irrigation goes through the main wound. We have to lift the anterior wall of the main wound a bit so that the chamber is nicely maintained. Aspiration goes through the aspiration cannula goes through the side port and in about 15-20 seconds all the visco is This is a bit of moxie and I am using uh, BSS to hydrate corneal stroma to close the side port. And now, this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber with 23G Simco. And all the visco is removed at this time, the antechamber is nicely formed and integrity of all the wounds are checked with cotton taped Janssen bard. Few drops of moxie is applied over the cornea 
and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will be useful in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.